Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello, friends. This week, let's talk about connection and community. It's so important to recognize our need to connect, our need to have feedback from other people and to feel important and like we belong and in a place that matters. And it's something that I go through phases with. There are times when I want to belong in a very quiet way, held back from other people, hiding from the world. There are times when I feel like I could become a hermit so easily and it would be great and I would just have all of the cats and I'd go out and feed squirrels and bunnies and birds and I'd be perfectly happy. And then it follows up by desperately needing my friends, having a need to be out in the world, seeing other people, being inspired by them, seeing beautiful things that have been created by other people. I think I get so inspired by art and by fabrics and just fashion and textures and all of that. And I can't really get that feedback hiding in a hole. (laughs) There is also a need I have to feel important. I know we all have that, right? We all want to feel important. And we don't feel important when when we feel like we're talking to nobody or we're talking to a void. I think we actually need intimate connections with animals, with people, with lovers, with children, with community in order to feel human. I think without that kind of feedback, without that sense of belonging and also the opportunity for touch and just being noticed, being acknowledged by other people around us, I think we get lonely, we get sad, and I think our health suffers. So I've made it a priority this year to really not just feel like I'm part of a community, but to start to foster one in a more active way. I think for years I've looked for where do I belong and how can I just show up and become a part of a community. And this year I feel like maybe it's more about creating the community that I want and creating the experiences that I want to have. So you know how you hear that um, the call to action, be the change that you want to see in the world. And when I heard that this past winter, like around January, I was thinking, well, what is the change I want to see, not in the world, but in my life? If something could change about how I'm living, what would it be? And the first thing I thought was, well, I really like my life. There's not a lot that I would want to change. And then I went, well, no, there's always room for change. (laughs) Things can always get even better. And what would it be? What would I like to have different? So My personal experience of the last three years, two of them were extremely cut off. Everything was virtual. COVID was happening. I mean, I I went along with the rest of the world, right? 2020 was very, very solitary. 2021 started to open up a little bit, but it was mostly outside at a distance and very hesitant. And then 2022, last year, started to be social again. And it was really exciting. And I found it actually really intimidating in a way. It's like when you don't do something for a while, you get shy of it, or you're like, whoa, this isn't what I'm used to. So I'm noticing our human tendency to be scared and to judge things that aren't familiar. And it's funny to me how quickly things can feel unfamiliar, even if there's something that you've always done. So it really is, I'm noticing this year, 2023, so God, almost four years later, (laughs) that um, it's becoming more natural. Going out to a restaurant, hanging out with friends, laughing in a group of people feels safe again or safer. I'm a lot less concerned. And it's like I'm remembering how often there used to be going out with friends and gatherings of children and just screaming people and physical activity and bluster and craziness. And I'm like, yeah, I want all of the fairs. I want to go and see all of the crafts and the artwork and dress up. I want to have an excuse to dress up and be beautiful. I want to go out and like laugh with people. I want to play games. 
how could I make more of that happen? So for me, the solution has been to reopen our home and to host game days again. So we are a extremely playful family, I guess. We really like board games and we like role-playing games and all of that kind of fantasy, sci-fi, fun stuff. I enjoy reading books. But when it comes to social gatherings, I thought, how can I just make this happen? Because it stopped happening. It had been three years, really, since we used to have um, at least once a month a gathering of just whoever could make it coming down and playing board games on a weekend. And that's like 12 big gatherings a year. And it would be anywhere from 10 to 15 people, children, lots of food, really rowdy, many tables of different things playing, having a chance to go out for walks with people and just having a really fun time. And then it just stopped. And what we had replaced it with was online gaming, which was different. It wasn't bad, but it definitely had a different feel and it limited down. Not everybody wanted to do it and it wasn't the same. And then there were Zoom meetings for socialization and just like having a tea chat with your friends. And I'm really glad that I did that and book clubs as well. But I want them in person now. I've gotten not greedy. I think I'm returning back to like the normal sense of life where I'm like, but I just need it to be a little bit more physical. I want an actual physical memory and I don't want to always be looking at a screen. I feel like that's not necessarily the healthiest thing for me personally. So I don't want to do it so much. And so the goal this year was to create intentional community. And for me, I'm building it around creating some games and creating like a group that's going to come hang out with me once a month, the whole year. So January was off to a rough start and it didn't launch the way that we had hoped. People were sick. uh, People were recovering from Christmas. It's okay. But in February, I'm so overjoyed. Game day happened. And not only did like role-playing game day happen, where I've got my little core group of people and we're creating like a little sci-fi expanse game, which is fun. So we're combining favorites like Firefly and the expanse science and creating our own little like space troop that's going out and being space pirates, I guess. It's going to be fabulous. And creating characters and just knowing that I get to have a consistent story that we're telling over the course of a year. There's something very comforting for me in that, that it's um, a long-term game. And it's also for me equally about my long-term friendships and being like, oh, thank God, my friends are coming over and we get to hang out and have tea and make new foods and just laugh and enjoy, enjoy each other and see our kids grow up and see them get to know each other and, you know, actually hire a babysitter and let them like go out and play so that we're not constantly interrupted, but they're actually really enjoying the day as well. And then all convening for food at the end of all this. And it's just joyous. And it's exciting because I already feel the excitement, not just from my end, but from my friends as well going, oh, finally, like we have something consistent to look forward to where there's a, not that you need a reason to get together with your friends, but it helps, or at least it does for us, particularly at the age um, when everybody's got young children, it's like you need an excuse or something planned in order for anything to happen. Like you need, you need a month's notice or it's really not going to happen. It's very hard. (laughs) So this is my intentional community building. And my husband said, I really want to have a board game day. That's not like a specific game. Just anyone can come lots of stuff. Let's hire the babysitter again. More kids are welcome. And we can just fart around, try new things again, experimental food, lots of laughter as it gets warmer. Like we'll get to play outdoor games too. So we've got things like Kube and we can throw sticks around and just play out and enjoy our life enjoy our life. That is what we're working for. So that's starting as well. And it thrills me. It thrills me. It's like something that I didn't realize had been so diminished. And it's not, it's so weird. I don't feel like the friendships were necessarily so diminished. It was like they were on a deep pause and they weren't allowed to deepen because there was so little contact. So I guess what I'm talking about is our need for continual connection and our need to have an interaction that fulfills us. 
And I think that happens differently for everybody. And there was like a really long stretch of time where I was really quite content and felt very fulfilled just having Zoom meetings with people and hanging out. I actually can go a very long time pretty solitary because I like to think and I like to draw and do a lot of quiet things. But even I have a limit and I want, I don't know, I just want more. (laughs) My first break into like, let's get back out there was Renaissance fairs. So just having a big community of people that are into the outfits and the food and just the crafts and all the things. It makes me very happy. I feel like I'm safe among my people and I get to dress up and I love that. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this year and I feel like a happiness really deep in my heart, knowing that all of that is coming. So I think that's something important about creating your space and feeling like you belong as well is having these touchstones of like moments to look forward to of knowing that there's a place that you want to be choosing to be there finding the way to be there some of them are hard for me to do some of them require like you know months of planning lots of savings of money um, travel to get where I want to be and then coordinating with multiple people hoping that they'll meet us there and then what are we going to do when we're there and all of those things can be stressful but they're equally rewarding And I think that happens for all of us when we're, you know, dealing with people, creating a community. It's not just about us. It does get complicated. It does get difficult. But I think that's why it gets so rewarding when it actually happens. So some of it for me, too, is learning how to relax in the actual social situations themselves. And for me, tell myself to calm the fuck down that it doesn't need to be perfect. Because um, a tendency I had as we first opened this up is I have to have everything prepared and it needs to be perfect and I don't want to interrupt anything. I want to have like the perfect flow of events. And as that morning dawned and people were coming and I started to get the text of like, hey, I'm running a little late and whatever, I was like, wow, what a relief because I'm running a little late too. And it made me just reassess myself and go, the point was to connect. It wasn't to have a perfect day. The point is to play a game. It's not to, you know, impress anybody. And it's just to have fun and to nourish each other and share food that we like and, you know, share the excitement of cool things that we've seen or done over the last month and, you know, share farmer's markets and new recipes and just all the things that we're excited about. And that did happen. And I hope for that for all of you as well, as you move forward into this year to think about who are the important people in your life? Are you seeing them enough? Have you told them how much they're important to you? And are you willing to bear your soul about that? I think I can share that creating my gaming group felt so extremely vulnerable to me when I first reached out because I was like, wow, I'm just going to bear my soul and say like, I'm sad and I'm lonely and I miss you all, this is the game that I want to play. I don't even know if you want to play it, but it would like mean the world to me if I could have a game that happens once a month. And it's not just about the game. It's really about you. It's that I want you guys to come and you guys to come play with me. And would you be my team? And I, you know, sent off that little text message and I was like afraid. (laughs) I was like, what if they say no? What if no one wants to hang out with me? So I think that's a really natural fear that we have. And yet, if we don't put ourselves out there and we don't say what it means to us, we don't have the chance for people to respond to us in kind. And what I noticed is that I have a crew. They are coming together. It is happening. It doesn't need to be grand, but they heard me and they want to be there. And that means the world to me because I, I want to be there with them. And that's so exciting. Mm. May you find your people sing those songs, have a great time (laughs) and carry this with you throughout the year to remember that it is our connections, right? It's our connections with each other that make life pleasurable, that make it memorable, that create our memories and create a life worth living. So cheers to you having a wonderful week, connecting with all those people that are so important in your life. And I look forward to connecting to you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.